Welcome to yet another Power BI tutorial from MIP Consulting. The objective of this tutorial is to familiarize viewers with the methods to carry out computations relating to irregular time periods in Power BI. The Time Intelligence Functions Index, as you see here, enable you to manipulate data using time periods including days, months, quarters and years and then build and compare calculations over those periods. These time periods are called regular time periods. In this video, we are going to see how we can deal with irregular time periods. For example, let's say a retail store finds that its sales during the first eight months of a year do not meet the expectations. So they decide to conduct a marketing campaign during the remaining four months. At the end of the four months, they want to find out whether the marketing campaign has been successful and resulted in an increase in sales. So they decide to compare the sales for the prior period of eight months with the sales for the period of four months during which the marketing campaign took place. The illustrations in this video, which consist of a clustered column chart, including current sales, previous sales, normalized previous sales, and two day slicers, one for the current period and one for the previous period, depict the methods to deal with such situations. So let's begin. First of all, let's see the various steps for making computations for irregular time periods. The first step is creating a dates table. This dates table will be the input for the current period date slicer. The second step is to create a previous dates table, which is nothing but a copy of the dates table. And this will be the input for the previous period slicer. Then we have to create an inactive relationship between these two tables. We are creating an inactive relationship because we don't want the previous dates table to interfere with the slicing and dicing that we do using the dates table. So the inactive relationship will become active only when those measures in which this relationship is used will be invoked. The fourth step is creating a measure for computing a metric for previous period. For example, we can create a measure called previous period sales. Then create a measure called normalization factor, which makes the metrics for two irregular time periods comparable. Example, if the current sales is for four months and the previous period sales is for eight months, they are not comparable. To make them comparable, we multiply the previous period sales by a normalization factor, which is the count of days in the current period divided by the count of days in the previous period. The sixth and the final step is to create a measure for computing a normalized metric for the previous period. Example, normalized previous sales. So let's carry out these steps one by one. Let's open Power BI Desktop and import the data set. This is the Power BI Desktop. Let's click on Get Data. Our data is in an Excel file. So let's click on Excel, click on Connect, and the data is a sample superstore. Click on Open. There are four tables in this data set, and we need only one table, the orders. So I have checked this box, and you can see the preview of the data here. And the data as such doesn't appear to require any modifications. So let's click on load. So we have the orders table here and the date that we are interested in is the order date. And we are going to compute sales for different time periods. As you see, we have only one table, which is the orders. The next step is to create a dates table. For that, as we've seen earlier, we create a dates table using DAX expression. We go to the modeling tab, choose new table, and we create a new table with this DAX expression in the Power Query Editor. So the first thing that we do is use the calendar auto function to create a base calendar. The base calendar essentially consists of a single column, which is the date column. And from the date column, we generate day, year, month, number, month, year month columns using various DAX functions such as year, month, etc. Let's see how we can do that. Go back to Power BI. So for creating the new table, I'm going to 
copy this entire code and paste it in Power BI. So let's go back to Power BI and let's go to Modeling tab, click on New Table and the Power Query Editor opens up. Let's paste the code that we've copied. So you can see the code here and let's press the Enter key. We can see that a new table called the Dates table is created which consists of date, day, month, month number, year, year month, etc. Now let's go to the second step which is create a previous dates table, which is a copy of the dates table, which will be an input for the previous period slicer. So what do we do? Go to the modeling tab, new table, and then use this code in the Power Query Editor, which essentially creates a new table by selecting all the non-blank rows from the dates table. Let's copy this code, go back to Power BI, click on modeling, new table, in the Power Query Editor, I'm going to paste the code that I've copied earlier and press the end key. We see a new table here called the previous dates. So we've created two tables, namely the dates table and the previous dates table. Now let's go back to step three. We have to create an inactive relationship between both the dates. The inactive relationship, as you see here, is a dotted line which is a two-way relationship. Let's see how we can do that. Head back to Power BI. Let's click on the model view here. In the model view, you can see dates table, the orders table, they are not related. And you can see the previous dates table. So what we can do is we can create a relationship between these two tables by creating a relationship between date and the order date. So we see a one-to-many relationship between the date and the order date. Now, the other relationship that we have to create is between the previous dates and the dates table. Let me drag this date and place it over this date. We have created a relationship. But when you see a solid line, it indicates that the relationship is an active relationship. So in order to create an inactive relationship, what we do is right click on this, click on properties and you can see previous dates table and dates table and we see make this relationship active is checked here. So we uncheck this box and click on OK. So immediately you can see a dotted line which means that this relationship is inactive. So we've completed the third step. Let's see what the fourth step is. The fourth step is we need to create a measure for computing a metric for previous period, that is previous sales. So we go to Home, New Measure, and we use this DAX expression to create a new measure called previous period sales. So let's do that. Let me copy this code. We are going to create a new measure for the orders table. So let's select the orders table, click on New Measure. And let's paste the code here. So let's rewrite the step. So let me type sum and we have to choose the right column here, orders sales. But let's have a look at this code. Power BI is going to create a measure called previous sales and calculate is a function. What it essentially does is sum the sales column in the orders table for all the dates in the dates table which overrides all existing filters and it's going to use the relationship where the dates in the dates table correspond to the dates in the previous date table. So for all the dates in the dates table, it's going to look up the dates in the previous dates table and then for those dates, calculate the sum of sales. Let's press enter and we can see that a new measure previous sales has been created. So we've completed the step two. Now let's see the next step. So let's go to step number five. The step number five is to create a measure called normalization factor, which makes the metrics for two irregular time periods comparable. So we go to home measure and we use this DEX expression to create the normalization factor. So let's go back to Power BI. Let's click on the orders table again. 
click on new measure and then let's paste the code that we've copied earlier. So it creates a measure called normalization factor by dividing the number of rows in the dates table by the number of rows in the previous dates table. Let's press the enter and we see that a new measure normalization factor has been created. Now let's execute the next step. The last step is to create a measure for computing or normalized metric for the previous period. So go to home new measure. The normalized previous sales will be we calculate the previous sales and multiply that by the normalization factor. So let's copy this much. Let's go to Power BI, then click on orders again, and then click on new measure and normalize previous sales is equal to previous sales multiplied by normalization factor. So let's press the enter button and we find that there's a new measure called normalize previous sales. So we are ready with all the tables that we require and all the measures that we require to create the clustered column chart visualization. So the next step is creating a visualization. So let's click on clustered column chart. Let's have a look at the data. In the orders table, we have a column by the name region. In the cluster column chart that we are going to create, we are going to analyze sales by region for the current period and the previous period. So let's head back to the visual and along the axis, we will have the region. So here is the region column. So let's drag and drop the region under axis. Under the legend, we leave it blank. Under the values, we are going to drop three columns, namely sales, previous sales, and normalized previous sales. At the moment, the sales, the previous sales, and the normalized previous sales is at the same level because we've not used any slicers. So we will use two date slicers, one for the current period and one for the previous period. So let's create two date slicers now. This is the slicer visual. Let's create one more slicer. Let's treat this slicer as the current period slicer. And let's treat this slicer as the previous period slicer. So in this slicer, I'm going to add date from the dates table. So let me drag and drop date here. So you can see the day. And in the slicer, I'm going to drag the day from the previous dates. So this is the previous dates table. I'm going to drag this date into the field here. Rename the titles. Let's try moving the previous period slice. We can see that the current period bars remain the same. Only the previous period bars and the normalized previous period bars change, which means that the slicer doesn't affect the current period at all. Now, let's imagine that the Superstore is looking at its performance from 1st January 2017 till, say, 31st of August 2017. So this is the previous period sales. So the pink line here shows the previous period sales. During this period, they found that the performance was not up to the expectations. So they decided to conduct a marketing campaign for four months starting 1st of September 2017. So the current period is from 1-9 to 31 12 of 2017, during which the marketing campaign took place. The previous period sales from 1-1-2017 to 31-8-2017 is for a period of eight months whereas the marketing campaign is only for four months. Let's say for the eastern region, the sales for the previous period was 83k, and the sales for the current period is, current period is four months, that is 130k. For western region, for the previous period, it was 142k, and for the current period, it is 108k. But we see the comparing eight months performance with four months performance is not a correct practice. So what we do is we apply a normalization factor and we calculate normalized previous sales. 
So the normalized previous sales here is given by the orange. So when we compare the current period sales for any region, the best practice is to compare it with the comparable period. So if the current period is four months, we should compare it with the four months figure for the previous period. That is what normalization does. It would be ideal to compare the current period sales with normalized previous sales. So let's see whether the marketing campaign has helped the company and whether there's been a growth in sales. So when we look at the normalized previous sale for the eastern region, it was only 41k. And during the four months of marketing campaign, it's increased to 130k. Similarly, for the west region, from 72k, the growth during the four months of marketing campaign is 108k. For the southern region, it was 28k previously, and it's now 66k. And for the central region, it was 42k, and during the current period, it is 64k. Which shows clearly that the marketing campaign has been a real success. So, time intelligence for irregular time periods is extremely helpful in those kind of situations where you have a promotion going on, a special campaign going on, and you want to compare the sales during that period to an earlier period before the drive or before the campaign. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much. We at my value your feedback a lot. See you again with another Power BI video.